All right, hello there, everybody. This is Kalora, and we do have set three, finally. Set three of the uh, semifinals between Beijing University and um, Tsinghua University. Uh, this, uh, for those of you guys who are watching live, of course, was delayed about uh, an hour and a half because of lots of technical difficulties on uh, Beijing's side. But we do have um, set three here, and uh, set four was casted before, but I'm not going to talk about the results uh, because, obviously, that'd be bad. Um, we have Hermite playing as the yellow Protoss for Beijing University. And his opponent is GB playing for Tsinghua University. Tsinghua University is up 2-0 before this game. Um, so set four might not matter if Tsinghua wins this game. Uh, so it's up to GB here to finish um, finish Beijing off. And uh, we'll see what happens. Um, we've got Beijing here, uh, the Protoss. Um, on Coliseum, uh, he's going to be scouting, let's see if it's the right direction, I don't know yet, he's going to be scouting in the wrong direction, and so will uh, Qinghua, who is the green Zerg. Coliseum 2 is a fun map for Protoss versus Zerg. Um, oftentimes, the Protoss can make it a very long game if he chooses to, because of the uh, ease of picking up an expansion, and the Zerg really has to sort of force the issue, either by going on the attack earlier, or out expanding the Protoss in the mid game. So we could be seeing a longer game, certainly. In fact, I'd be expecting a longer game, unless there's some kind of very quick rush from the Zerg. Protoss also starts off um, being able to, uh, if they want, go one cannon instead of two. They can even go Gateway first. Um, gateway Forge can be the order. Uh, we are going to see Forge, though. Slightly more conservative. Interesting. So GB for Qinghua going for a uh, 12 pool. This is really a 12 pool. I guess he's afraid of uh, a Zealot Rush. I mean, it would be very unexpected, certainly, if there were a Zealot Rush. So um, maybe he's expecting that for that very reason, that it would be a very unexpected build. But generally, 12 pool is hardly ever, ever seen against anything but Zerg. You really never see it very often against Protoss or Terran, because it's just... It's kind of like an in-between build. It really doesn't serve you that well. And, uh, you know, it is going to give a tiny advantage to Hermite, um, given that he won't need to go for cannons before his uh, Nexus, if he properly identifies the build, of course. He's gone for one cannon, and that's all he'll need. Um, Uh-oh! <laughs> but maybe not... Maybe not. We're seeing a creep colony going down here. I don't think this is going to do anything, though. I think the cannon is way within range, so it's going to probably get cancelled, in fact. No, it's going to actually try to go up. This is a waste, I think, for GB. GB is not going to get anywhere with this, yeah. GB wasting a drone here and a uh, creep. Let's see if he's... no. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to lose that. So, GB is uh, significantly behind now, um, after doing that complete failure of a sunken rush. I mean, if you're going to do that against a Protoss, you really want to do it after a 9-pool, or even faster, you know. And actually, Hermite choosing to be even more um, stingy, I guess, canceling his second cannon, uh, because he doesn't really need it. He's going to have a Zealot out pretty soon, and uh, GB does not have enough to uh, attack him anytime soon. GB going for a double expand. And we'll see if he goes for a yet another hatchery. It is a possibility. He is going to go for it. So he's going to go for a four-hatch uh, build here, which means most likely four-hatchery hydras. The problem is, does Hermite, um, is Hermite going to be able to, to scout this and prepare for it with a lot of cannons? Because four-hatch hydras is actually quite good against uh, Protoss on this map. The hydras have this high ground they can walk on and snipe cannons. Also, uh, Hermite, unfortunately for him, is not transferring probes. I am not sure why exactly that is, but um, he isn't. So that is uh, a little bit of an error. Now he's finally transferring. Getting himself a core at the usual timing. And uh, an evolution chamber going down for GB. That is interesting. Um, I still got to assume he's going to go four hatch hydras, which means he should be putting down a den, but... Maybe he's afraid of some kind of fast tech rush. Or maybe he is going to go for some weird build that involves uh, a really early um, upgrade. I have generally not seen this build, though, with the 4-hatch. I don't think it's standard. 
but that doesn't mean it's bad or anything. I'm just going to check if everything is all right. Um, sorry if there's a little bit of lag while I do. Uh, and if Hazel's watching, please uh, give me a PM and s let me know if uh, everything's cool with the stream and everything. So, um, while I wait for that, looks like we've got a Hydralis Den, finally, for Zerg, and he's going to get a very early plus one attack. Alright, everything is fine, according to Hazel, so thank you. Um, and we're going to see what happens with this Hydra attack, uh, you know, with, with this Hydra rush, rather. This is an interesting build. I, I, I think it's possible that, um, that Qinghua's player has practiced this a good amount. Meanwhile, though, uh, he's facing a completely unharassed build from Hermite, but Hermite actually going for two Stargates, and I don't see any other tech, so this is actually not good for Hermite. I don't know what he's thinking. Maybe some kind of um, Bisu build, or maybe some kind of weird Corsair Reaver, but he doesn't have a uh, robotics facility up, so this could cost him, despite um, his decent opening. I really hope he just, you know, doesn't mess up this build, whatever the heck he's thinking about. He's going to get a lot of Sairs, certainly. Where are his other units, though? Oh, this is going to be disastrous. Because, look, what's going to happen is, um, eventually, Qinghua is going to get a lot of upgrades for his, uh, his Hydras, and eventually he's going to get a ton, an absolute ton of Hydras. Now, on the other hand, if, um... If Beijing manages to, you know, get his Sairs rolling and kills off enough overlords, this could be pretty bad for Qinghua. Um, especially if there is some kind of uh, Sair Reaver or Sair DT follow-up. We still do not have any indication... Alright, am I just missing it? Because I do not see any tech buildings yet. What is going on? A fleet beacon? Oh my god! Oh my god, there's going to be a carrier rush coming from Hermite. This is this is madness. And it's not Sparta. This is this is just madness. Um I've done this before. <laughs> if you if you've been following my videos from the start, which some of you probably have, I used to do do this. <laughs> but I did it after like Sair Reaver. I never went Sair straight to well actually I did against Vilda back in like you know, last October, but Vilda is not the best player in the world, and, uh, you know, it might work against her, but this is not going to work against a decent-ish Qinghua player, especially one that's going to go for a lot of early Hydras, because his carriers are not going to do much, and, oh, this is just, he doesn't even have good Ser Micro, he, oh, this is so bad, this is so bad, oh my god, what is he doing, he's going to get D-Web, that is right. Well, I gotta say, this is gonna be a fun game, no matter what happens. But I do think Hermite's chances are completely shot. He's really just just shot himself in the face here with his build. That I just... And it's inexplicable. Why would you go for it? I, I mean, there's no... There's no justification. And he's gonna need Reavers, still. Even if he gets out some carriers, because, uh... The Zerg, you you know, if you go for this, you, the reason why you do it after Sair Reaver is because your Reavers can really help you hold your front against lots of Hydralisks, um, while your your carriers can go and harass. But uh, unless we see some absolutely, you know, reach class D webs here, I don't think this is going to do anything. And meanwhile, plus one attack, of course, has uh, probably been done for a while. Yeah, plus one. This is plus two here, by the way for the Zerg player. He still has no idea what exactly is going on, but he's got to get suspicious at some point of some kind of weird build. Uh, definitely not carriers, though, because no one does that. But once he sees... Actually, you know what? Hold that thought. Once he sees D-Web, he might actually expect it. Because uh, why the hell would you get D-Web this early? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a fun game. This is like... You know, and this is a must-win situation for Beida, too. Let's not forget that. Qinghua is the team that is ahead. So Beida here, relying on a guy called Hermite. Hermite, who uh, evidently um, really likes carriers. Going th two base carriers, straight up two base carriers against the Zerg. Wow. Um, just incredible. Well, the Zerg player still has not picked up an expansion, but he probably has a good number of Hydras, plus one attack finished. And even now, I think it would be hard for Hermite to hold off a frontal assault. What Hermite can do is use all of his gas on cannons, but cannons become, obviously, increasingly less useful as uh, the Hydras get more and more upgraded. Um, and he's not even going to be able to hurt the Psy that much, although actually he might, just because uh, GB is not protecting his overlords. 
And uh, there are a lot of Sairs out, of course. And GB actually is not really... I don't think he knows what's going on just yet. Because if he knew what was actually going on, I think what he would do is just go for an attack. Alright, Hermite has spotted a new base. Um, and GB is not really attacking, nor is he doing a good job of defending his uh, Psy. Alright, so... <laughs> We're going to see plus two attacks soon for the Hermite. Man, Hermite, if he pulls this off, he is a huge pimp. If he doesn't pull it off, he is a lunatic, but still kind of pimpish. I don't know, not really, actually. I don't know. If he pulls it off, though, this is going to be another pimpish play. On the level of um, the guy in game one, I'm sorry, I forgot his name. Uh, was it a XP? Um, the guy who went and snuck uh, the DTs around on Destination. Uh, whatever his name was. That was an amazing game, though. The Protoss player. I think the Zerg player, honestly, is playing a little too cautiously. Notice all of his defenses. I think what he's thinking is that this is Sarah Reaver. But, on the other hand, is it going to matter, is the question. Because he's got three bases fully up, and he's mining, and Protoss has two bases, and he's uh, going to be facing Hive Tech. He's done real, really no harassment. And this means the Zerg is uh, just as strong, if not stronger, than the Protoss. Oh man, I really hope he remembers to get the uh, the carrier um, <laughs> carrier upgrade where you get the eight interceptors. He doesn't seem like he's got it, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> oh god, this could be really embarrassing for Hermite because he's only got four interceptors from what I'm seeing. What is he doing? He's building cannons around the back of his base. Man, you know the thing is, what you want to follow this up with is not this many. C cannons, you, what you can do is get speed lots um, along with your carriers. Alright, it does seem like he has gotten the upgrade, because he's building a lot more uh, interceptors. You can get speed lots with your excess minerals. It's a lot better than getting cannons at this awkward position here. Like, what is this position? I mean, I guess it's like against a <laughs> a drop, like a hydro drop on top of, I don't even know. That's just a bad positioning. There's like no reason for it. Um... So we've got five carriers here, and uh, I still don't think the Zerg player has figured it out. But he does have a Defiler's Mound, and Defilers are incredibly good against this carrier build. Um, I don't know if he spotted it yet, but if he has, I think this... Well, he's going to now. And uh, I think I think Hermite has this one chance to do absolutely crippling damage, and he's going to need to cripple... Um, GB here in order for him to have any chance of winning this game. And uh, so far, he's done a good job with the D-Webs. Um, GB not doing a great job with his Micro, and he might lose one of his hatcheries here. This is something very good for Hermite, of course. Um, if he can pick off, like, a couple of these hatches... Um, you know, he could certainly gain an advantage. Uh, but what GB needs to be careful about are Scourge. Um, and and uh, more than Scourge, actually, it's the D-Web slash Hydra combo that I'm sorry, it's the uh, Dark Swarm slash Hydro combo he needs to be careful of. I have no idea why he didn't finish off that hatchery. Um, he, he might have lost one carrier, but honestly, this hatchery is worth it. And that was a mistake. Um, so hopefully he doesn't make any more mistakes or else this game is over. Uh, now that he's revealed his hand, I think GB is good enough of a player to figure out what, it, what the counter is. Um... It's not, by the way, a ton of Scourge, because a ton of Scourge actually gets eaten up by those upgraded Sairs. It's basically uh, Dark Swarm. Some Devourers also can be good in combination, but really Dark Swarm by itself with Hydras um, can really effectively kill this build. Let's see, we've got ourselves eight carriers now for the Protoss, and seven Sairs. I'm just checking out his uh, hotkeys here. This is his entire army, basically, and he really should be using some D-Web here. I don't understand. He's got plus two attacks. So do the Hydras, though. Um, all right, he's slung us D-Web in the middle of nowhere, and uh, looks like GB is going to be focusing on Interceptors. I don't know if that's a great idea for GB. He's actually losing a lot of Hydras here. Uh-oh, this could be bad for GB. He's really not able to do much damage, although he is killing Interceptors at a very quick rate. Um, he's not killing Carriers. Uh, oh, although this Carrier... GB! Oh, man, what are you doing, GB? Oh, just let it... Ugh, so it dies. Um, he's down to, what, seven right now? Yeah, seven. Run your Corsairs, bro. Uh... And wow, though, I mean, he's managed to kill, like, two control groups of Hydras. And that is certainly 
not bad. But on the other hand, just look at the resource count of GB. Um, GB can go and mess, you know, anything right now, and he should still be able to win this game. Because Hermite is not taking the chance to expand. If he had, like, a third or even a fourth, that would, uh, that would give him a chance. But he's not doing it. As you can see here, he's got nothing. So, yeah, you know, this is disappointing. From someone who's done this build before, um, you know, and I'm a, not a good Protoss player by any means, but I think I'm pretty sure I would have been able to pull this off a hell of a lot better than this guy has. Because, uh, you know, a couple of Reavers and Shuttles is certainly very cost-effective against this build, um, this Hydra build that he's facing. And either, you know, a, Ser a Reaver Harass would also be a great thing to do uh, while you're busy with, while the Hydras are busy with the, the Carriers, because um, basically what the Carrier uh, combo allows the Protoss to do is um, force the Zerg to go to one place. Oh! Defiler gets killed. It might have been going for a Plague, by the way. That's also a, uh, a killer of this build, of course. But look at this. The Protoss player might actually be able to take out the lower right here. Um, GB is trying to reinforce. He has Scourge, uh, one creep, one Spore Colony, but that's it. And uh, if the Sairs are in the right position, he could be able to intercept the Scourge. Although they're following instead of... Uh, oh, come on, bro. Come on. Oh, man. Th that was an unnecessary loss there, in my opinion. Um, so GB is going to lose this base down here, I think. But he might be able to uh, get a big Plague off, um, which will do a ton of good if he manages to do it. Uh, I don't know if Hermite's going to focus on this um, Defiler, but no, the Defiler has managed to get the Plague off. Oh, that is going to be bad. Um, so these, these carriers are heavily damaged. They're down to 150 hit points each. Uh, of course, uh, just a shield, rather. Just 150 shield. Uh, oh, another Monster Plague. Um, so this is almost worth the loss of uh, the lower right, although I wouldn't say it's definitely worth it, actually, because now the uh, Zerg is down um, once again to three base. However, he's facing a Protoss who is going to be mined out as main, and uh, also has his carriers in a precarious position with almost no hit points left. So an interesting game forming up here. Um, I think the Zerg player, honestly, can switch to Devourers and win right now. Because what's going to happen is he's just going to starve Hermite out. I mean, Hermite right now has uh, just six carriers left. Wow. Oh, man, and Scourge are going to be so effective against these uh, badly damaged carriers. Notice that this base is actually getting up here. Um, and Hermite right now only has five left. I don't think he has a chance of this game yet uh, anymore. Um, that was a good interception, but he needs to do that like 15 times to have a chance. Although, I think it is true that GB is not necessarily responding correctly. Um, I would certainly have gone for Devourers at some point before now. And he might lose his den, which would be horrible for him. Wow, this could be closer than I think. Um, GB finally... Uh, well, no, I'm sorry. Hermite finally is going to pick up a new base. Oh, he's going to lose another carrier, though. Check that out. For some reason, I've been seeing no D-Webs. And that's disappointing, because why the heck do you get D-Web if you don't use it? Um, and these carriers are now beleaguered here at the uh, right. I think there's only three left. No, four left here. Three in these this carrier group here. Um, but GB also is expanding, which is absolutely critical. And unfortunately for... Uh, I'm sorry, Hermite's expanding. Unfortunately for GB, he's not countering. What he should be doing is countering any new bases that come up. If he counters hard, um, there should be no way of... Uh, Hermite being a able to actually uh, expand, because his carriers will be forced to uh, constantly be on the offensive. Um, otherwise, GB is going to just expand all around the map. So Hermite's force over here is no longer existent. It's just one carrier left. Alright, here's the attempt at the expansion. Um, three carriers, they have full health though, so I think they should be able to kill off a couple of Hydras. But I think if Hermite... Um, you know, wants to win, he's going to need to switch tech. You know, some speed lots or some reavers would do miracles. In fact, speed lots would be pretty good. Although right now, he's hurting on the mineral count so bad that it might not help. Oh, but look at this. He's actually got a lot of carriers um, chilling. Neither player really has uh, an advantage in APM, and both of them are just a little bit too slow for their own good. I mean, if both of them had, like, 50 more APM and, you know, 50 more effective APM... I think the game would have looked a lot different, because I think, um, I think Hermite, well, I mean, I don't love his build, obviously, but I think he might have been able to close out this game 
Um, and certainly GB would have been able to close out the game had he had better control and multitasking. There's no way he, sh- you know, he should be in this position even. Um, but right now, it, he is still way ahead. He's reestablished himself at the bottom right. There's been no critical damage done. Oh, Dark Swarm! Finally, we see the Dark Swarm, and no D-Web there, no Storm, no anything. So this could be uh, absolutely brutal here for Hermite. This is all that GB needed to do, in fact, is just get his act together with the Dark Swarm. Oh, and a Plague! And uh, see, that's the thing. This carrier build doesn't work. <laughs> that's the problem with the carrier build. It doesn't work against the Zerg late game um, when they have the combo ready, and you just have carriers. Uh, at least you need D-Web for, for dealing with this Dark Swarm combo, because obviously these Hydras are invulnerable. They're invulnerable against this. So uh, right now, with a couple more creeping um, D- uh, Dark Swarms, this base is going to go down. And with that, I think the hopes of uh, Hermite um, winning this game, wh- which were slim to start with, by the way, are, are just going to sink. Um, no question about it. I think, uh, unfortunately for GB, he didn't use his Defilers earlier. I mean, he could have saved his lower right, but it does seem like, um, you know, congratulations for Qinghua, and uh, very unfortunate for Hermite, who uh, is going to have to make a last stand here. Another good Dark Swarm this time, and, uh, you know, the carriers are going to go down. By the way, if you're facing this kind of build, and the game's actually quite close, what you want to aim for a lot of times is not the carriers. You want to aim for the Corsairs, who usually are not micro very well, I mean, because carriers are doing most of the micro, and the Corsairs, if they're actually doing D-Webs, are incredibly potent, and they're also the main defense that the carriers have against Scourge. Um, so it does seem like this time, GB will win the game, uh, you know, just by killing off this base, Hermite, who didn't expand the entire time, um, is going to have no chance here. In fact, Hermite should just go and counter as hard as he can, um, and just forget about this base the moment he saw the Defilers. Uh... Yeah, right now, still three full running bases for GB, and oh man, he's got 4,000 minerals, 4,000 gas. I mean, the moment that he picked up all those bases and had like 2,000, 2,000, this game was over, because Hermite didn't have that, <laughs> and GB did. <laughs> so, uh, it does seem like Qinghua is fielding the superior team, Hermite GG's 3-0 Qinghua University, so... Congratulations, Qinghua. You are going to go to the finals where you are going to face MIT uh, tonight at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, Game 4 will still be will still be up, of course. Um, you guys who are watching live uh, have seen Game 4. Um, but uh, in that game, uh, well, you can watch it. It's an amusing game, but it doesn't count is the important part. So um, we have Qinghua winning 3-0 uh, sweep by Qinghua against Beijing, who put up a good fight, I gotta say, um, and I'm excited to see how they did against uh, Sweden, but uh, in the end, um, I think they were outclassed by Qinghua University. Uh, MIT has got a long road ahead of them. I know they're led uh, by their best player, Stryker. I don't know if their, he's their captain or not, but he's certainly a formidable player, but against guys like uh, you know, XP in the first game, um, who else was there? Yeah, XP... Um, and Orion and GB, these three starters for Tsinghua University, man, they were pretty darn good. Um, GB, this game, played a very safe game, uh, I'd say. Um, you know, he, he didn't react perfectly, but he reacted well enough, and that was able to give him the win. And certainly, uh, game two was pretty open and shut. It was just really a speedling. I'm sorry, it was just a build order win for Orion. Game one was brilliant by XQ, though, I gotta say. That DT move, man. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. I am now going to stop this uh, cast and this uh, game. So, um, thank you. And uh, we'll see you tonight at 9.30 p.m., guys. Do come. uh, 9.30 p.m.